Oh, what? What is up? Oh, gamers. It's gamer TV here. And, oh, my God. Oh, my God. There's so much to talk about about this boys finale. And, holy crap. Yeah, I'm going to be talking about the boys in Roblox. I'm also going to be playing this game called The Soups. And for some reason, they have Superman uh, in a game pass. Here's the controllers right here. The controls. Alright, so let's get into this. We're in here, and they got the characters right here. They got Homelander, A-Train, and Translucent. For some reason, they got Superman in the Battle Pass. Now, they don't have the rest of the characters for some reason. So, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just go as A-Train. Anyways, I'm gonna talk about the show at Season 1 through 3, and I'll talk about my thoughts in the video as well. But, uh, basically, at the beginning of the show, it just shows, like superhero saving kids saving the day whatever and uh, there's this guy named Huey he's getting off of work and I'm stuck this is the tower where the superheroes are anyways it starts at the beginning with Huey uh, he, he's just a normal guy getting off work and with his girlfriend and basically uh, they're on the sidewalk and his girlfriend is just a little bit off of the sidewalk just one inch one inch it can't hurt anyone you know the cars they drive way uh far from that where she's standing but a superhero named a train he just runs right through her and leaving the only part left of her which is her hands completely disintegrates her <laughs> yeah messed up stuff so he stops afterwards and he, he just responds to huey who's in absolute shock right now and can't process what's going on and a train's like i can't stop i can't stop i can't stop and he just runs away so basically he did a hit and run but Huey knew who it was so yeah Huey's obviously not that happy and the company who's trying to cover up the murders uh, the people who are in charge of the superheroes Vought it's founded by Frederick Vought I think that's who they named it after it's basically a superhero company but they claim to be a pharmaceutical company because the reason these heroes have their powers is because of a thing called compound v and yeah they're trying to pay off huey forty thousand dollars to not say anything so and huey's like I, I i don't want your money i just want an apology but then huey's dad is like come on man it's forty thousand dollars all right it's forty thousand but then huey's like they killed robin though robin was his girlfriend that a train killed and Huey eventually does get his apology and he signs the contract to not tell anyone and then it, it all's well it ends well I guess uh, except for Huey because his girlfriend's now dead uh, but then a guy named Butcher he, he comes along and he he's like Huey Huey I know who you are I've had bad experiences with superheroes too these soups eh. And basically, Butcher's backstory is that his, him and his wife, they went to like some sort of convention or some sort of event where superheroes were. It was like a bar, and Homelander was dating Queen Maeve at the time, who, they're part of a superhero group called The Seven, and Homelander basically assaults Butcher's wife in a room, and Butcher finds this out after his wife is reported to be missing and he finds this out through a security camera where well uh, she's in the room with Homelander and then when she gets out she doesn't have a shoe on and she looks completely traumatized yeah not good and Butcher to the, he just hates superheroes now so yeah basically the superheroes uh, a new superhero joins the seven uh, Starlight she's been wanting to get in since she was a kid she looked up to them and basically a superhero named the Deep gives her a tour but then she reveals that, you know, I had a crush on you when you were when I was a kid. And then the deep is like, oh, really? And he's like, he, he's already ahead of the game. He just takes his pants off. And, and then she's pretty shocked. And she's like, why would you do that? But then the deep is like, no, it's just, it's just a question on how badly you want to get into the seven. And then Starlight's a bit upset. So she, she breaks a TV with her light powers. And the deep is like, if you don't... If you don't do this right now, if you don't, if you don't, if you don't do this, if you don't do this right now, this, you see that, you see that, if you don't do that, if you don't do that, 
uh, I'm gonna tell them that you attacked me and I'm gonna get you kicked out of the seven. And so Starlight does it in, in the bathroom. So, uh, not good. Not good. The deep is, uh, a really deep douche. Uh, that, that wasn't good. <coughs> But yeah, the seven contains members, the superheroes, there's Homelander who is the leader, he has a cape, you know, he's, he's right there basically, he, that's him. He has, he can fly, he can, in, he has laser vision, he has super hearing, he can, he can see through people's masks, and he can hear heartbeats. Yeah, he's, he's pretty insane. Uh, there's A-Train who, again, he, he has super speed. But he takes Compound V, and he's like a he's a drug addict for Compound V, so it can be faster and faster and faster. And Starlight, she has the power, and she gets her powers and her energy from well, light. So, like for example, this I guess she can get powers from that, and more light gives her more powers. The Deep uh, can talk to sea animals, like like just ocean animals, and he can I guess I think he can control water. I don't know if he can, but he can communicate with animals from underwater. Translucent, he can turn invisible, and apparently he can read people, I don't know. Queen Maeve, her superpower is super strength, that's about it, just super strength. Uh, she's basically like the Wonder Woman of the team, and is that about it? Uh, I, think that, I think that's about it. Yeah, so... Alright, here we already got the apology from A-Train, so, you know, it's just nothing to worry about now. There's nothing to worry about. But then Butcher shows footage, security footage, I don't know how he got it, <clears throat> of A-Train basically making jokes about killing Huey's girlfriend, Robin, and basically showing no remorse and basically joking about it. Like, yeah, I, I just ran through her, and he's laughing about it, and this doesn't really make Huey happy, because he was like, damn, I thought I got an apology, I thought he was sincere. But... No, 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 no. So now Huey and Butcher team up with the help of Butcher's friends as well, who he also recruits. Uh, he recruits uh, Frenchie, his friend Frenchie, and I'm just going to call this uh, the other person Marvin because there's no way you came up with that child name <laughs> during childbirth. Like, there's no way you agreed to that. The parents agreed to that. His name is M.M. <laughs> But, I'm not going to say what it stands for, but uh, people call him Marvin. So that's fine. Uh, they're teaming up. And Huey, after Huey gets an apology from the Vought Tower, he meets A-Train, and he's like, and he gets his apology. He, Huey goes to the bathroom before he leaves, but a chip, a chip falls out from, like, I think his ear. And then Translucent was in the bathroom, invisible, so he's like, what the hell is this? So then he follows Huey to his place, and uh, basically almost tries to kill him. And then Butcher just runs Translucent over <laughs> with his car, even though he's invisible. It just took a lucky guess on where he was. So, yeah, then there's this fight scene, and then Huey eventually electrocutes Translucent, because Butcher distracts him, and then they capture Translucent. They trap him in a cage that's electrical, and they put a bomb up his butt. So if he tries to escape, they can they can basically just blow him up at any time. So they're keeping him alive because they want answers about other superheroes and how to get to them. And Translucent's just telling everything they know, everything he knows, I guess. And he eventually does escape from the cage that's electrical because he pees in a cup. They give him water so he can stay alive. He pees in the cup and he throws it onto some electrical wires to make the cage, like, not electrocute. Not, not, non-electrical anymore. So he escapes, he's invisible, but then Huey sees him. And Huey is like, hey, hey, if you don't get back in the cage, I'm gonna blow you up. And then, <coughs> Translucent is trying to convince Huey to let him live and that he can uh, put Huey in the spotlight and basically say you can be known as the hero who saved Translucent you can go back to your life and then Huey's like convinced and he's just gonna let him go and then Translucent's like yeah attaboy thank you and then uh, uh, Translucent kind of gives this look 
that he's gonna go and kill Butcher and maybe come back for Huey. So Huey just just blows him up. Yep, he's dead, and then Butcher sends the remains of Translucent to the Vought Tower. Yeah. <laughs> Good stuff. Now, uh, during these adventures, I guess, uh, Frenchie finds a girl who's on Compound V. She's kind of psychotic. She kills a lot of people for some reason. Don't know why. But well, Frenchie finds this girl. Her name's Kamiko. And he's trying to uh, talk to her, basically gain a connection with her, so uh, just to know that she's not alone, I guess. And just to, I guess, trust people. Uh, and she gets into a fight with A-Train, and A-Train is showing no mercy, he's completely destroying her. <laughs> was, I, yeah, nah, it's just brutal. Uh, I'll fast forward now, uh, Starlight and Huey eventually start dating, and, you know, pr pretty cool, pretty cool, but then Starlight finds out that Huey was using her at first and using all the other heroes. Well, Butcher finds out that they were kissing on, on a date, and then Butcher's like, Oi, mate, what are you doing? And then Huey's like, No, 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 she's one of the good superheroes. Yeah, uh, the only good heroes in the Seven are Queen Maeve and Starlight. Basically, the females. The females are the good ones. And, <clears throat> yeah, Starlight and Huey eventually start dating. And... At the end, Butcher is trying to, uh, basically attack Homelander, so he basically explodes the house after Homelander kills his girlfriend, who was, I think, the CEO of Vought uh, at the time. And, yeah, A-Train is a Compound V addict. He, he really cannot stop getting it. He's obsessed with that stuff. So... At the time, A Train uh, might be getting replaced out of the Seven, and he basically has to race this dude named Shockwave to determine who's faster and who's more good for the Seven. A Train wins, but barely, because he took so much Compound V. He's an addict, and at one time, the boys somehow get into his girlfriend's house. Her name is Popclaw. She's got like Wolverine claws, and she accidentally kills her landlord. <laughs> yeah. It's funny. I don't know. But they basically hold her hostage, and she tells everything that she knows about the compound being where it is. And A-Train was like, did you tell them about the compound being? She's like, yeah. And then A-Train seems to be reasonable at first, but then he fastly, he just really fast injects her with a bunch of needles and, you know, filled with drugs. So then she overdoses because A-Train only cares about himself and his reputation, and, you know, he, he just likes to cover up murders for some reason. <laughs> yeah, they have Compound V. A-Train is at Huey's house for some reason, and uh, he wants Compound V. And so Huey has the Compound V. Uh, Huey's dad is also in the room, and then A-Train was like, I, I don't know what that is, and then he was like, oh, you don't, so you don't mind if I do this, and he basically pours it, and then A-Train is freaking out, along with Huey's dad, because Huey does, Huey, Huey's dad doesn't even know what that is. Uh, yeah, and then Huey's distracting A-Train, A-Train thinks that Huey came all alone, but then Kamiko jumps out of a vent and basically breaks A-Train's leg with a crowbar. Yeah, yeah, they broke it with a crowbar, and, uh, yeah, that's about it. He basically takes more Compound V to uh, heal up. Uh, yeah, A-Train's brother advised him not to take the Compound V because it's bad for his heart. And at the end, there's a final battle. And Butcher, uh, Marvin, and Frenchie get captured by Vought guards. Yeah, security basically, and they're trapped in a cage. And Butcher is with Huey, and Butcher is like, now nah, we have to leave him, even though, and then Huey's like, what, well, come on, man, but, but, why, but they, they have a family, and they helped us get this far, and then Butcher's like, y'all forget about them, 
and Huey is just like, nope, I'm not going with you. And then Butcher's like, oi, Mike, what are you doing? I thought, I'm out for revenge for these superheroes. I thought you were too. I'm not, I don't have a heart, man. <laughs> it's just, yeah. Huey, Huey then uh, just goes out and he saves them. And in the final battle, uh, Starlight versus A-Train. And A-Train is blaming Huey for Pop Claw's death, his girlfriend, even though A-Train was the one who killed her, and he just tries to blame Huey for it and not taking accountability for his actions at all. And, well, A-Train has a heart attack when he wants to finish off Huey. Pause. Uh, he basically has a heart attack, and then Huey is trying to save his life by giving him CPR. And at the end of Season 1, Butcher, Butcher's wife is revealed to be alive, with Homelander's son. Yeah. Homelander has a son. Uh, yeah. Uh, this is bad. And she was basically labeled as missing and she was kept isolated by Vought. I guess from any of this becoming public or getting out because she's basically raising a superhero baby. Yeah. So. And the Deep also is pretty depressed because he eventually gets kicked out of the seven after starlight reveals everything to uh the public she reveals that the deep assaulted her and the deep is forced to make a statement basically saying well i do believe that this was consensual uh yada yada even though i blackmailed you into doing that with me <laughs> yeah he eventually gets kicked out of the seven and he eventually gets the same treatment he gave starlight except with his gills. He has gills. He's very insecure about his gills. And basically, he's hooking up with a girl and she's basically touching his gills and the deep is saying, you know what, that hurts, man. I told you to stop. And then basically, his gills get fisted. She puts her entire hand in his gills and the deep is obviously in a massive amount of pain. So after the hookup, he shaves his entire head because he's miserable. Yeah. Yeah. So that's basically season one, and now we're going to season two now. Uh, basically, it just opens up with Black Noir. Oh, that's who I forgot to mention in the seven. Who was in the seven? Black Noir. Yeah, basically his powers is he basically he's just like a killing machine, and he has a healing factor, I think. So, yeah, he has a healing factor. He, <laughs> yeah, that's who I forgot to mention at the beginning. He's also in the seven. Uh, it starts off season two. Black Noir is basically just killing a lot of people. He's a killing machine, bro, and he's killing uh, someone who was claimed to be the first soup terrorist. And once you know it, he's Arabic. A very, very wow. That's just that's not racist at all. <laughs> wow. And yeah, it, Black Noir succeeds. Uh, basically, the dude's power is the soup. The soup terrorist, the Arabic dude's powers is he can basically just explode. Yeah, bomb. Yeah, that's totally not racist at all. He basically turns the whole building into fire. And then Black Noir is not affected by this at all. He only has a little bit of burns, but, you know, nothing he can't take. So, uh, he basically just decapitates the, the Arabic dude. And he's dead. So, that was easy. <laughs> so, like... I don't know, man. Also, A-Train gets kicked out of the Seven because he can't really run anymore. And, well, they replace him with Shockwave. And they also get a new member of the Seven to replace the Deep, and they get this girl named Stormfront, who I thought was my favorite character at first because she seemed decent, and she seemed, like, reasonable, and she, she seemed kind of badass. And, well, they completely took a 180, on her turn, no, 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 screw that, a 360, no, a 720, no, screw that, a 69,420 on her character, they completely flipped her character from being this cool, reasonable, logical, cool hero that speaks a lot, what everyone wants to speak, and they completely turned her into a Nazi, yeah, didn't see that coming, did ya, <laughs> it's like, wow, oh crap, they got Mars on this, wow, like, yeah, that's and they completely uh take a they flip her character from being a 
cool superhero, thinking that she's gonna be one of the good guys, one of the decent superheroes, to just being just as bad as Homelander, who's a psychopath, the worst one in the seven. Now, they also explain a backstory in season two. Kamiko has a brother who, and they explain their backstory. They were basically captured. And they were forced to be terrorists, and it, it has something to do with child trafficking as well. They were involved in like rings or something. I don't know, it was pretty bad, but they were forced into that life. They didn't want to be in that life. They were forced to, and, well, uh, they reunite Kamiko and her brother, but Butcher is like, I don't trust him, so he's about to snipe him, but Huey tackles Butcher, and Butcher just misses, and then Kamiko's brother, he's not happy, so he's gonna attack the humans, the boys, and then uh, Kamiko stops, and they basically trap Kamiko's brother, who on a boat they're living on a yacht for some reason I don't know they just are uh, <laughs> and at at the end uh, his brother her brother Kamiko's brother is free and holy crap Kamiko's brother is free and well uh, it seems she convinces him to not attack the humans, and then Kamiko's brother is like, okay. But then Stormfront, Stormfront attacks them, and basically at the end she kills, uh, she kills Kamiko's brother. I, I also on another point, she killed a random civilian's, uh, random kid's dad, like their parent, because he was black. And I was kind of confused, like, why did they not go over that storyline? Because they could have easily sued Stormfront for that. Because she didn't kill the kids, she let the kids live. But she didn't let the dad live. And, like, the dad was innocent. So, like, what happened with that? They didn't address that at all. Like, what happened? But, yeah, Stormfront just kills Kamiko's brother. And, well, it's just, it just goes bad from there. And, yeah. Well, A-Train's trying to find a way to get back into the Seven. So he he finds out that Stormfront's a Nazi, and he gains evidence from it. And, well, he gives the evidence to Starlight and Huey, because he wants back in. And the Deep is not doing so well right now. He's in a rehab right now for heroes. He's with this guy. He's pretty nice. It's a nice superhero. Uh, he I think he lost a war. And basically, he, he's been broken ever since, and he couldn't save people. And the Deep is in the rehab, and he's basically crying and suffering, and he's pretty sad. And then the Deep joins the Church of Collectives. He, he's joining a church, and he's basically a puppet for that church. He, he's, he's hilarious, though, in Season 2. It seems like he's getting a bit of character development. You, you would think. Uh, yeah, but it seems like he... He's getting some character development. They're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna turn his character into a good guy. Seems like he's wanting to change, even though he did the unforgivable and assaulted someone. Uh, also, there's a whole court case with Vought. There's this congresswoman who uh, is holding a, I don't know, a court session against Vought. She's a congresswoman, and basically. Butcher convinces the CEO, the former CEO of Vought, he basically threatens him, and so he forces him to, uh, take, uh, like, testify against the superheroes. So, it seems like, uh, nope, the, the superheroes are screwed, they're gonna get arrested, and then BAM! Everyone's heads are exploding in the court. Uh, Shockwave, A-Train's replacement for the Seven, he dies. I mean, you're, like, the fastest man alive now. And you couldn't run out of the courtroom? I mean, it was probably due to shock, but your name is Shockwave. Just get out of there, man. You really couldn't run away from that? And that that was disappointing. I feel like Shockwave deserved more screen time. Or at least I want to learn about his character, but... Yeah, nope, he's dead. <laughs> uh, also, I want to take a rant on this. Alright, so there's this character in The Boys. His name is Lamplighter. And I was completely pissed on how little screen time he had. Uh, basically, uh, Mallory, uh, she bas she's the one who showed Butcher the footage of Homelander assaulting his wife and, you know, all that. Mallory uh, has history with Lamplighter because Lamplighter accidentally 
killed her kids or grandkids, I don't know. But Lamplighter uh, uh, was about to die, and Frenchie doesn't like Lamplighter either because he basically took uh, days off. Like, he didn't take days off from his job to help the boys with the superhero stuff. And his friend was dying due to drugs. And he's like, I'll be back. And he had to basically just do his job. And he couldn't, he didn't see his friend ever again after that. So, because, well, because of this lamplighter case. So, Frenchie hates lamplighter as well. And they eventually resolved this thing. And lamplighter, he's actually a good guy. He didn't, he didn't mean to do any of the stuff he did. He didn't know. And he's actually a good guy. He's not bad. And so they... So when Mallory's about to shoot him, uh, well, Frenchie's begging, uh, Mallory for his life, for Lamplighter's life, and, uh, she spares him. She spares him, and they use Lamplighter for good, and Lamplighter, uh, Huey eventually convinces Lamplighter to help Starlight, because Starlight is then captured by Vought, because... It, they find out that Starlight was the one who was uh, leaking information about Compound V to the public. Yeah, the Compound V thing wasn't public before, and it became public. She eventually helped leak it to the news and to the public. And some superheroes didn't even know about this. Like, Black Noir, he didn't know about it. The Deep didn't know about it. And, yeah. No, so, Lamplighter and Huey, they go to the tower. Because Lamplighter was actually a part of the Seven at the time. Uh, before so he has access to the tower and he has his handprint can get into the tower so they're about to save starlight and then uh lamplighter sees his his statue is gone he's like they removed my statue and then he was like i just wanted to make my dad proud and then out of nowhere man he lights himself on fire and he kills himself and this wasn't a slow death either he light himself on fire because his, his his power is fire but he was completely alive and conscious the entire way until he died. Like, he was screaming. So, I was pissed off because Lamplighter only lasted about... He was introduced in one episode and he lasted a little bit in the next episode. And I was really pissed about that because I really wanted him to join the boys and I really liked his character and I felt like they could have done a lot more with his character. But, like, why? Why'd you have to kill him off, man? That was just so unexpected and it was... I didn't like that. So Huey eventually does save Starlight and her mom, and they basically bring them to the boys' lair. Uh, it was like an underground place, so no superheroes could find them, and they watched the court case live, and, well, yeah, everyone died in that court case. And uh, in season two, Butcher and Becca, they reunite at one point, and it's all good. It's all good. They reunite. Uh, uh, Becca explains to Butcher what happened, and that she was in fact assaulted. She didn't cheat or anything. She was in fact assaulted by Homelander, and she was forced by Vought to be isolated. And uh, Homelander then tries to bond with his son uninvitedly. He just tries to invite and uh, bond with his son. Son doesn't bond. Then Homelander tells the truth to Ryan because Becca has been raising Ryan like a normal, normal kid, like a normal kid. Like he doesn't know anything about his powers or anything. But then Homelander tells the truth about what happened, and then and then Ryan wants to go with his dad and Homelander's new girlfriend, which is Stormfront. Yeah, Homelander's dating Stormfront now uh, because they're equally as psychotic and terrible. So. A train eventually leaks the Nazi stuff about Stormfront. It's getting all over the news, and then uh, there's this fight scene. Uh, Butcher and the boys, Queen Maeve and Starlight, they're helping each other, and Butcher's like, "You have to go, Becca. You have to go." And Becca's like, "No, I'm not leaving you." But then he's like, "I made a deal with Stan Edgar, who is basically the owner of Vought right now. Like, like I." Like, if, if they if they leave me alone, they leave you alone, I give them the kid. And I know you love the kid, so I, know I can't just do that. So, basically, he's telling them to leave, and that he's basically just going to die on his own. 
leaving him to die, and then so they're driving off in the car. They're pretty sad, but then, uh, BAM! Stormfront attacks the car and it flips multiple times, and they're all still alive. So, Stormfront is trying to get Ryan, but then Kamiko, Queen Maeve, and Starlight, they're fighting. They're fighting Stormfront, and Kamiko gets her neck snapped just like her brother, and it seemed like she was dead. I was like, no! No, I want to see her get her revenge, and uh, avenge her brother. But then I was like, oh no, she's dead. But nope, she just gets back up, because she has a healing factor too, Kamiko. So she can't die. And, uh, they eventually <laughs> whoop Stormfront. They keep kicking Stormfront, punching her in the face, but then Stormfront eventually flies away and escapes. Uh, then Stormfront is trying to get Ryan back and from Becca, and then Becca stabs Stormfront in the eye, and then Stormfront is choking Becca, and Ryan, the son of Becca and Homelander, He's, she, he wants to do something, but he doesn't know how to control his powers, so he just uses his powers, and it kills Becca, Butcher's wife, and Stormfront looks like she's about to die, too. So, I was pretty pissed off when I found out Butcher's wife died. It was like, oh, come on, he did all that just for his wife to die? It's like, really? Really? I mean, Ryan didn't mean to do it, but, yeah, uh, Becca's dead. Uh, uh, but Homelander finds out, and he's like, "Ryan, did you do this? Did you, did you, did you hurt Stormfront?" And he's like, "I ain't mean to." He's like, "Ryan, let's just go with me." And then Ryan is with Butcher. Ryan is with Butcher, and oh my God, it's insane! And then Homelander's about to attack Butcher. But then Queen Maeve uh, shows a video to Homelander, like, "Let them go, or I'll show this video." And the video is basically Homelander refusing to save people from a plane, a hijacked plane. So yeah, I forgot to address that scene. Basically, Queen Maeve and Homelander, they were uh, on a mission, and it was a hijacked plane. There was like lots of terrorists on the plane, so Homelander was destroying them. And then in the pilot seat, uh, a terrorist was uh, shot a pilot, and then uh, Homelander destroyed that terrorist with his laser eyes. But then he accidentally destroys the plane controls, and he doesn't know how to fly a plane. So Homelander's like, let's just leave them. Let's just leave them all to die. And Queen Maeve is like, no, we have to find a way. Come on. What about the kids? And then Homelander's like, nope. And he just basically pulls her away and is just watching them all die while Queen Maeve is feeling guilty. So Queen Maeve has a video somehow, and it's explained in Season 3 how she got that video, of one of the people in the plane filming a Homelander not willing to save them. And Queen Maeve is like, you let them go or else I show them this video and Homelander lets Butcher go with Ryan and Butcher is giving Ryan advice and well Butcher is free Starlight is back into the seven a trains back into the seven and the deep is pissed that a trains back into the seven because the deep was doing all the church's work and he's still not in the seven so the deep leaves the church and at the end it turns out that the congresswoman was holding the court case she was the one behind the exploding heads thing uh, she has powers to basically explode people's heads and so that's what she does with the church of collectives leader she explodes his head which i oh man i really wanted to see more of his character too i think his name was ali star ali star i don't know what his name was but the church of collectives leader i want to see more from him uh just kill him off like that <laughs> yeah so, in Season 3, it's a one-year time skip, like, what's happened. Huey's got a job with the Congresswoman, and they seem to be having a, a nice friendship. And I, I think the Congresswoman likes Huey, uh, but, yeah, Huey doesn't know that she was behind the exploding heads thing. Uh, they basically work for an organization that basically captures superheroes, and they basically just hold heroes accountable for their actions. Yeah. And, yeah, remember when I said the Deep was developing in Season 2? They completely ruined that. They complete Oh, crap, is that Homelander? Where, where, where is he? Uh, yeah, they completely ruined the Deep's character development. He does not show any forgiveness. Uh, yeah, no. No, he's just, he's terrible. <laughs> he gets controlled by his girlfriend. He's a simp. He's, he's, he's just not even, like, he, he's just dumb. And then he's, he's having 
intercourse with octopuses. It's like, it's weird, man. It's weird. His character development is completely ruined. It's like they turned him to, into Aquaman from Peacemaker. It's like, I don't, I don't even know, man. And then it's revealed that Stormfront's alive and she's just in a hospital bed and she's completely amputated from her arms and her legs. So I'm like, what? Well, come on, man. Really? Really? How is she alive? They should have just killed her off because eventually in later episodes she doesn't get screen time and then it's confirmed that she killed herself because her dream of someone becoming a Nazi leader for the Nazis and Homelander didn't want to become the leader for them because he just wants to be the leader himself. Uh... Yeah, basically Stormfront just kills herself in her own bed somehow, and apparently she, like, bit her tongue off, I don't know, when she swallowed it. I don't know how she did it, but I really didn't see a point to bring her back to life. I, I think she should have just been dead from the start. Like, I didn't see a point of her to be back in Season 3. It just seemed like a waste of potential or anything. Like, I didn't, I didn't see it. The Deep eventually gets back into the Seven somehow, and A Train and the Deep. A Train's going through this whole rebrand thing. He rebrands his suit. You see the suit right here, that blue suit. He turns it into like a suit to represent, I guess, Black culture, African Americans. It's gimmicky uh, because well, A Train's doing this because his brother is like, "Come on, we need justice," and A Train's just like, he's not even really delivering justice. He's just making a suit, and ah. Uh, yeah, a lot of people are <laughs> criticizing his suit. I actually like the suit. I actually like the suit. I like the design of it. I liked it. And they also uh, mock the whole uh, Ky uh, Kendall Jenner Pepsi commercial thing. And they they did a better job at it. I think A-Train's commercial was better than Kendall Jenner's commercial. <laughs> yeah. So then A-Train is talking about... Uh, well, it was brought to his attention by his brother. But he mentions to the Seven that... Uh, there's a superhero named Blue Hawk, there's a soup, yeah, Blue Hawk, and he's basically, uh, destroying black neighborhoods, and he's basically killing unarmed black people, uh, and, yeah, it seems like he's about to get justice, and then, uh, nope, nope, the deep just steps in, and he's like, no, nah, we, we gotta do something else, and then A-Train has a fight with the deep, and, uh, they basically just ride off Homelander, and then A Train's like, Homelander's a great man because he knows that super uh, Homelander has super hearing. And then the D and then A Train's like, the way you kiss his the way you kiss his butt is gross, man. And then A Train's like, I mean, the Deep is like, hey man, I get it. And then A Train's calling the Deep dumb. And then the Deep is like, oh yeah, well how about I tell Homelander who leaked all that Nazi stuff on Stormfront? And then. A-Train's like, how about I tell Homelander that you, flish, you fished out the Flight 37 video out in the Atlantic and gave it to Maeve. So I was kind of shocked, and no one's even really talking about that, because, like, the Deep, out of all people, he had he had access to... I was wondering how Maeve got the video, unless the person in the plane who died live-streamed the incident, but the Deep somehow got the video, and he gave it to Maeve. So I was kind of shocked on that. It seemed like he was developing and turning into a good guy because he wanted to get rid of Homelander, I guess. But then they just have a fight, uh, A-Train in the deep. And, yeah, there's also this new compound V. It's called Temp V. Uh, Stan Edgar has the idea to make superheroes join in the military, but if that doesn't go, if that doesn't go through, he wants... Uh, soldiers from the military, just soldiers, to take this temporary compound V, which uh, temporarily makes them superheroes for about 24 hours and gives them powers, and, and uh, I guess the colonel of the military, the president, I don't know, I think it's the president of the United States in this universe, basically he's like, nope, nope, it seems, it seems too OP, man, <laughs> yeah, uh, also, there's this new superhero who's joining the Seven, uh, Supersonic. He's Starlight's ex-boyfriend, and we didn't really get to see what his powers were, but he's actually a good guy. It seems like he was gonna, I don't know, try to get Starlight back, I thought, or betray her. But Starlight basically telling Supersonic, yo, we have to destroy Homelander. Uh, and then Supersonic's like, yeah, I'll do it because it's the right thing, and... 
uh, supersonic after a train in the deep fight uh, the homelander only helps up the deep and the deep is basically taunting a train the a train wants to des destroy the deep and fight with him again and supersonic holds him back they go into the elevator a train's like I wish there was a way to get rid of homelander and then supersonic's like what if what if there is a way uh, and then a train's like what do you have in mind and they're basically hinting that a train is going to join uh, to rebel against Homelander and it's what it seems like at first but in the back of my mind I know A-Train's a coward so I was like oh god is he is he gonna rat out Supersonic to Homelander and tell Homelander about this and that's exactly what he does he tells Homelander about this and this leads to Supersonic being dead off screen we, we don't see his actual death scene but we see the aftermath and it's brutal his face is completely gone uh, yeah, I was really shocked when I saw that scene. Uh, I did not expect Supersonic to die off that quickly. We didn't even really see his powers. So, yeah. Uh, there's theories saying that A-Train only told Homelander because Homelander had super hearing and he heard the, the plotting going on. He basically told A-Train, uh, he forced A-Train to tell Homelander what was going on. Basically forced him into a confession. But nah, I think Atrian's just a coward. <laughs> He's just a coward, man. So, yeah. Now, uh, the boys are trying to find a way to destroy Homelander because, well, uh, Butcher hates Homelander uh, for good reasons. And they find out that the superhero named Soldier Boy, he's just, he's the only person who's stronger than Homelander, so they're trying to get him. The Marvin, though, has a history with Soldier Boy because Soldier Boy, well, he he killed his family, but it was an accident apparently. And yeah, he, Soldier Boy was captured by Russians, and he was experimented and tortured for years. And yes, yeah, it's, it's pretty hard to watch. It's pretty insane stuff. But yeah, he's still alive after all of this. They're basically experimenting on him just to show like how strong he is. And yeah. Marvin doesn't want Soldier Boy to free Soldier Boy because, well, I mean, good reasons. He killed his family. And uh, Butcher and Huey, they take the temporary Compound B, and Butcher has powers. He has laser laser vision, and he's bulletproof, too. He's basically got Homelander's powers, basically. And Huey has teleportation powers. Yeah. So they eventually free Soldier Boy from, well, where he was. And we eventually uh, get the backstory of Soldier Boy. Soldier Boy uh, was tortured, and his team betrayed him. And basically, Soldier Boy wanted to. Uh, well, his team. It was the Seven at the time, uh, but yeah, I think it was called. What was it called? Was it called the Seven back then, or was it called Payback? I don't know. But Soldier Boy wanted to uh, get revenge on all the people the teammates who had the idea to sell him to the russians they didn't sell him they just gave him away they didn't get paid anything they just wanted soldier boy gone so soldier boy confronts his ex-girlfriend who is like queen mave and soldier boy is basically like homelander and uh i think her name is courtney i don't know uh, but she's like queen mave and she's trying to plead for her life because she knows that soldier boy is out for blood and out for revenge and soldier boy is like I loved you. They didn't pay you a thing. I loved you. I was holding on to the hope that you'd save me. And then and then the ex is like, I didn't love you. I hated you. We all did. And when I heard that, I was like, okay, uh, she deserves to die. But Because I thought Soldier Boy was an innocent hero. But then I kind of had a feeling there was something behind that. And that Soldier Boy wasn't really that much of an innocent hero. But I wanted to give Soldier Boy the benefit of the doubt. Also, the thing I have season three is Huey continually talking about how much he doesn't want to be saved by Starlight and how he just wants to save Starlight for once and I'm like dude you did save Starlight one time you saved her and her mom with the help of Lamplighter uh, and you did most of the work because Lamplight well Lamplighter got into the building but Lamplighter basically killed himself and well Huey saved her so I don't know why he's continually talking about wanting to save Starlight when he has saved Starlight before. Like, I, I don't... I don't know. We eventually get a backstory to Black Noir, and Black Noir's not actually a bad guy. He, he, 
he is a killing machine, but he just does what's asked for the mission. He's not really a psychopath who just does this for no reason. He just does what's asked. And he's actually a nice guy. He's sensitive. And he was treated really badly by Soldier Boy. Uh, Soldier Boy would basically sabotage Black Noir and eventually the final fight where when Soldier Boy was captured by the Russians, the whole seven at the time they fight they fight Soldier Boy and Black Noir gets the absolute worst of it because uh, when they were fighting him, they uh, Soldier Boy basically uh, burns uh, Black Noir's head on the side of his face and basically slams his shield into Black Noir's head multiple times, like I think like four to five times, and somehow. Black Noir is still alive. He has a healing factor, and, it's, and it shows. It was in a cartoon animation, the backstory, because Black Noir has these imaginary cartoon friends. <laughs> it's basically like Big Mouth, but he has these cartoon friends, these Disney type cartoon friends. I, well, not Disney, I think they're more like Looney Tunes, but they reenact the whole backstory. And in the backstory, it shows that Black Noir's brains was out, and he was still alive and moving, but. That could have just been an exaggeration, maybe his brain wasn't out and it was just like, just a scar. Because we do see a scar on his head in the original thing. Because it seemed like in the war, there was, it was, it was like, it was like due to the bomb impact. But no, it was actually due to Soldier Boy's damage that he did to Black Noir. And Black Noir is just a sensitive, scared person. And, you know, uh, cartoon friends is like trying to convince Black Noir like, hey, Hey, look, I know this is some tough stuff, but you knew when you gave Soldier Boy to the Russians that he would come back and that you have to face him. And, yeah. Uh, it's eventually revealed uh, in one of the episodes. Well, Soldier Boy is uh, trying to find basically everyone who uh, planned the whole Russian thing. So he's going, after he went after his ex, he went after uh, another, I think they're called the TNT twins. Yeah, so he goes to this place, this party, and I'm not going to say what it is, it's just, it's just weird, man. All of these superheroes are there, and uh, Huey is eventually there, and A-Train's there, and Huey and A-Train bump into each other, and Huey's like, he never apologized for Robin, and then A-Train genuinely gives an apology, because, well, he knows what it's like now to uh, see someone get hurt, because Blue Hawk... Uh, hurt his brother, A-Train's brother, uh, when A-Train wanted to give Blue Hawk the benefit of the doubt, and he said that Blue Hawk wanted to apologize, and then Blue Hawk loses his, his temper, and he basically destroys the whole entire place, and his brother is now paralyzed. So, and then Ashley confronted A-Train, and like, uh, A-Train's like, I want justice, and then Ashley's like, you want justice? Only because it happened to you? I had to cover up three murders that you did. And, and you did the same thing, uh, and basically, uh, A-Train apologizes to Huey because he now realizes what a hypocrite he is, and that he realizes how messed up and how it hurts, so, yeah, but then, then he was like, oh, oh, come on, I just want an excuse to punch you, so he just punches him anyways, <laughs> yeah, Soldier Boy eventually finds the TNT twins, and, uh, he doesn't seem to kill them at first, but then he hears Russian music in the background, and that's PTSD. So he basically blows the whole building up. And, yeah. Then there's this fight scene with Butcher, Huey, and Soldier Boy versus Homelander. Because, well, Butcher freed, uh, Butcher freed Soldier Boy. So then they have a deal that, hey, you have to join us and you have to kill Homelander. So then it's revealed at the end of the episode that Soldier Boy was actually Homelander's father. Also, Maeve is working for the boys, too. Like, side by side, she's in the seven, but she's also working with the boys. Uh, and at, there's one scene where she's, like, uh, hooking up with Butcher, and I thought they were going to get together, but they don't. It was just a one-time thing, I guess. I, really, I actually like them together. But, yeah, Soldier Boy is revealed to be Homelander's father. <laughs> and, yeah. At the end of the the party, you know, where Soldier Boy basically blows up the party, uh, A-Train sees Blue Hawk at the the party. That's what I'm going to call it. Uh, he sees Blue Hawk there, and A-Train grabs Blue Hawk, slams him down, 
And A-Train can't really run, because if he does run, his heart's probably gonna explode. But he slams Blue Hawk to the ground and gets revenge for his brother, and basically just runs super speed while dragging Blue Hawk on the road. So basically, Blue Hawk is getting skinned really fast. And yeah, no, nope, Blue Hawk dies, and then A-Train looks like he's gonna have a, he has another heart attack and his heart basically stops and it seems like he's dead and nope we've been pump faked yet again and that a train is alive and they basically gave him a new heart and guess whose heart they gave him they gave him blue hawk's heart they gave him a racist's heart the, the heart that <laughs> killed that that paralyzed his brother yeah he but then he's able to run again and he's going to be able to run again without, you know, having heart attacks. Because he's got a good heart now. A good new heart. Granted, it was a racist's heart. But, you know, you know, it's it's, it's all good now. <laughs> it's all good. Then we get the final episode. Uh, we learn about Soldier Boy's backstory. Uh, I just want to say, they kind of ruin Soldier Boy's character. Like... At first, they were making it seem like he has, he like, he said that, he had a conversation with you, he's like, I accidentally killed people, I didn't mean to, I'm not a bad guy, so it seems like he's a good guy, but then we find Black Noir's backstory, and basically Soldier Boy was just a bull, and he was just as bad as, a bad leader as Homelander, so, yeah, <laughs> but, yeah, no, uh, so Soldier Boy, Butcher, and basically the boys they're looking to kill homelander so in the final episode uh uh homelander is talking with black noir black noir and homelander have a really strange relationship because homelander actually likes him because well black noir doesn't really talk and homelander can only hear himself when he talks and so there's no really arguments or agreements <laughs> he's just talking he's like he was your previous team leader. Do you know any idea on why he would do this? And then uh, Noir is just not saying anything. And then Homelander's like, "I'm glad to have you. With, uh, I'm glad to have you on this one, buddy. I'm glad to have you with me on this one, buddy. You're the only one I can count on." And yeah, it's funny. They have a strange relationship, but they genuinely like each other. Even though Black Noir knew that Homelander was Soldier Boy's son. Uh. Yeah, Homelander confronts Noir, and he asks, Hey, did you know that I had a father this whole time? Because Homelander didn't really get love as a kid because he didn't think he had any parents, and that he was just made from a test tube like all the other superheroes, and like created with the Compound V. And then Noir, Noir trusted Homelander. He's like, he's not as bad as his dad. He actually likes me, he respects me. So then he says, yes, I knew basically nodding his head because he can't really speak anymore due to the damage that Soldier Boy gave him. And, well, uh, well, Homelander didn't really take it well. It seemed, he was just like, oh, why didn't you tell me? And then, out of nowhere, he just, he just guts Black Noir, like, full-on guts him. He puts his entire fist into his stomach and then pulls out one of Black Noir's intestines out. It seems like Black Noir is going to die. Because all the cartoon characters, they're saying, God, don't worry, we're so proud of you, man. You're gonna see Christ the Lord. And, well, uh, no, I, I don't think he's dead. I, I don't think he's dead, man. If he is, because this is the only proper farewell we see of a character when they die. I don't give farewells to characters when they die. They just kind of just kill them off out of nowhere. But this seems like a, well, uh... <laughs> This seems like a farewell to Black Noir, and if that's true, if Black Noir is dead, I'm gonna be pissed off. I'm gonna be pissed off at the writers because they're Black. I really want to see Black Noir get revenge on Soldier Boy, but I don't think he's dead. I don't think Black Noir is dead because Black Noir somehow survived. Apparently, his brains being uh, chunks of his brain coming out of his head and still being able to move. And, you know, basically, Soldier Boy slamming, uh, shield, this shield, into Black Noir's head multiple times. I'm, um, and I'm like, if he can survive that, he can probably survive his intestines being pulled out. It's like, I don't think he's dead. 
I don't think he's dead, but if he is dead, then he deserved better, Black Noir, and I, I'm really pissed off at the writers if they really killed him off just like that, man. But, yeah, so Soldier Boy finds Homelander, and Homelander's like, you know, uh, we, Homelander also reunites with Ryan. Uh, Ryan's going in and out to these homes to be safe, so where no superheroes can find. Uh, Homelander then, uh, talks to Ryan, and then Ryan wants to go with Homelander, so he does. And Soldier Boy finds Homelander along with Butcher and Maeve, and, uh, Homelander is trying to convince Soldier Boy to join him. Like, Homelander's like, if we work together, we're gonna be unstoppable. <laughs> and then, yeah, then, the Soldier, we also learned Soldier Boy's backstory too with Butcher. Uh, Soldier Boy was abused as a kid, his father was uh, was an ass, and basically said that Soldier Boy was a disappointment. And we also learned Butcher's backstory as well, and I gotta say I'm really disappointed in Butcher. Basically, Butcher had an abusive father, and he'd get whipped but with a belt, along with Soldier Boy. Soldier Boy would also get whipped with a belt, but uh, he was also talking with the Dean, I think, uh, and... Well, the dean was like, ah, you're failing your classes, I have to tell your parents. And then Butcher's like, please don't tell my parents, my dad's gonna get mad. And then the dean's like, I know, I just hate for you to turn out like him, so I just want you to do better. And then Butcher just attacks the dean out of nowhere with a stapler and starts whipping him with a stapler. And then Butcher's brother sees this, and Butcher accidentally hits his brother with the stapler, and then Butcher's brother Lenny is like, what the hell, what the hell, man, get away from me. So, no, not good. And then, at the end, Butcher uh, is running away from home because he can't stand his dad. And then Lenny wants to go with Butcher, and Butcher's saying, nope, you can't come with me. I mean, my dad hates me the most, so uh, he, if, if I leave, he'll probably just let you be alone. And then, and then uh, Lenny's like, come on, Butcher, please. And then Butcher's like, no, it's not my responsibility to take care of you, even though I'm your big brother. And, well, Lenny eventually... Uh, shoots himself because he's well he's miserable his brother is gone it's butcher's fault all right it's butcher's fault butcher is a complete idiot and he sees Huey as like Lenny and uh, Starlight tells butcher that uh, the temporary V if they take one more dose like the dose is actually fatal if they take one more dose they could die and Huey could die if he takes one more and so uh, Starlight tells Butcher to tell Huey, and Butcher, and Huey's like, is there something wrong? And Butcher says, nope, nothing's wrong. So he's basically allowing him to take the B. So, it, they, they technically, they're just ruining his character. <laughs> yeah. So, back to the fight scene. Homelander wants Soldier Boy to team up, and then, uh, Soldier Boy also said that he always wanted to have a son because he wanted to be better than his dad, to prove that he could be better than his dad. And... Butcher is trying to convince Soldier Boy, nope, nope, he's not your kid, you never raised him, never did any of that, he's, he's bad, and so they're fighting, Homelander's trying to convince Soldier Boy to partner up and team up and that they'd be unstoppable together, and Ryan also, uh, Homelander shows Ryan, so, so Soldier Boy, Ryan, and that, like, look, this is your grandson, like, you have him and you have me. And Soldier Boy's like, it's a shame of how much I've missed, and I wish I was there uh, to teach you to be better, and not some soft, weak, <laughs> sniveling, yeah, basically, he just calls him weak, and then Soldier Boy pull is exactly like his dad, and just calls Homelander a disappointment, <laughs> and so, yeah, and then they start fighting, they're about to kill off, hey, yeah, 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 yeah. So basically, they're about to kill off well, to kill off uh, Homelander, but then Ryan uh, lasers Soldier Boy, and then, well, uh, Soldier Boy's pretty pissed, so he just he completely, he, he, uh, he, ow, he, he hits Ryan, and then Ryan's hurt, and Homelander is genuinely concerned for his son, and it's not like he was he genuinely just went to his son after he was knocked out and instead of trying to kill soldier boy who was literally about to blast them with his uh, uh quote unquote hero gasm but he just bombs uh, his powers is basically just exploding like 
basically killing people off. And Homelander is not focused on Soldier Boy about to kill him. He's actually focused on his son who's on the floor, and he's just convinced. He's like concerned, not convinced. What am I saying? He's concerned about Ryan, and yeah, he's about to be killed. But Butcher is not allowing him to hurt Ryan because Ryan, Ryan is actually a. Oh yeah, take that. Ryan and Butcher actually had a relationship together. They had a bond. So Butcher lasers Soldier Boy. And Soldier Boy's like, dude, wh why, 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 why can't I get him? And then Butcher's like, not the kid. And then Soldier Boy's like, why does that matter? I thought you said blood didn't matter. I thought that was the whole point. And then Butcher's like, he's my wife's son. And Soldier Boy's like, wait a minute, Homelander smashed your wife, and then you want to save the brat? And Soldier Boy kind of has a point <laughs> there. And then Butcher's like, I made a promise. And then Soldier Boy's like, well, this is it. Everything you've wanted, it's right there. And then, and you're just gonna. <laughs> you're just gonna throw it away and then butcher's like stand down soldier was like screw you so then there's a fight scene uh homelander's about to help butcher fight soldier boy but mave is there and she's basically fighting homelander and homelander's like come on mave not now it's bigger fish i have bigger fish and then queen mave's like i don't and then bam fight scene and I didn't actually know Maeve had powers at the time. I didn't know what her powers were, but she has super strength because she could take on Homelander. She makes Homelander bleed at one time. That's pretty rare to see Homelander get uh get bruised or bleed. So yeah, but then Homelander uh, gouges out one of Maeve's eyes, and that was stupid. I'm sorry, but like, how did you, how did you just let that happen, Maeve? Like, you just let him do that, and then uh, eventually she gets revenge by. Stabbing Homelander in the ear, basically making him deaf in one ear, and he has super hearing, so that's pretty effective. So, yeah, pretty effective. And Soldier Boy is fighting Starlight, uh, Marvin, Kamiko, Butcher, and Soldier Boy is basically taking them all on. And just like uh, the backstory, uh, Soldier Boy is being held down with like a mask over his face so he can't breathe so he could pass out just like in the backstory but like what his team did they held him down and they put a mask over his face and yeah they're holding him down but soldier boy is about to explode and everyone is about to die so queen mave uh she sacrifices herself she because because everyone in the building is gonna die uh, it's like a 20 story building or a 100 story building i don't know 50 stories i don't know but it's a pretty large building like a like a big tower so uh well they as mave mave jumps she tackles soldier boy and out and they fall off out of the window and soldier boy explodes with mave and yeah seems like they're dead Ryan goes with Homelander, and turns out Maeve is alive along with Soldier Boy. Now, and just the only thing that happened to Maeve was that she lost her powers. Now, this is the problem I have with Soldier Boy's powers and the logic behind it. Because Soldier Boy, so you're telling me that Soldier Boy and Maeve are alive after Soldier Boy exploded with Maeve, and it only took away her powers. So then what, what was Butcher worried about with the kid? He thought he was going to kill the kid? If that was the case, it was only going to take away Homelander's powers and Ryan's powers. It wouldn't have killed him or it would have just taken away their powers. Like, that's all it would have done. But Soldier Boy also killed his girlfriend using that exploding technique. And it didn't really take away her powers. It just took away her life. And I'm, I'm kind of confused on that. Does it depend, like, how the strength is? I don't no uh kamiko and frenchie they're together uh frenchie has this weird past uh apparently frenchie was like a hitman uh for like the mafia i don't know and he was th th the descriptions of what he did was pretty brutal and i'm hoping that what he did was to just other bad guys but apparently if, if that's not true if it's just regular people then i'm i'm generally pissed at frenchie because uh Apparently, he kills witnesses, too, who see the things that he did, so it doesn't really seem like he's a really, really that good of a guy. He seems innocent and cool at the beginning, but then they reveal that he has a really bad past, 
and yeah, I, I don't, I don't know, man. It's just, it's, it's weird. It's disappointing. They're trying to ruin all the main characters. Now, I want to rant about someone. Marvin's ex-wife. Marvin's wife and him, they divorce. And Marvin's wife, the, she knows about uh, Marvin's backstory with Soldier Boy and superheroes and how they're bad. But she marries a stepfather. She, she, she gets with another guy. And he's all about superheroes. And he, he loves Homelander. And he's basically an idiot. He's like, he's such an idiot. Everyone, everyone agrees that he's an idiot. His name is Todd. And, yeah, she somehow just stays with him. How, how are you staying with him after knowing that you dated Marvin and you knew that uh, superheroes are bad and that he had a history with them and then you marry? I mean, you have, his, then you, you, you get with someone who's all about superheroes and loves superheroes and basically rides them uh, like like he just like I don't get it like I think talentless writer put it best in his words how he explained Marvin's wife so like like this is what talentless writer said yo your wife's a dumb like I, I don't get it man I don't get it uh also well the finale Homelander and Ryan, they're together. Ryan's gonna be evil. Uh, uh, I also see, uh, yeah, Homelander's definitely uh, supposed to represent Trump in the film because, well, they re they reference the cabinet meeting where basically Trump is praised, and they reference Trump's Cinco de Mayo tweet with the tacos and that they had the best tacos in the tower, and they also have uh, the QAnon guy in the background, the guy with the horns who stormed the Capitol. Basically, they reference a lot of Trump stuff. I don't know if that's supposed to be like prop. I don't. I don't. Is that considered propaganda? Like big propaganda? Because they're making it out to be like that Trump's a psycho who will just kill people. I mean, I mean, yeah, he did. He did kill the, the president of Iraq. I think right. I don't know. I'm not going to talk that much about politics. But yeah, that's basically the boys, man. That's the boys, Soldier Boys alive. And man, when I saw Soldier Boy every time, me and my dad saw Soldier Boy, we'd immediately sing, you know, Soldier Boy, I had a wow, Ron is trying to want me wrong, Ron is trying to send a Superman. Now, what happened? You, Granddad Soldier Boy. <laughs> you know, that we'd sing that every time we see Soldier Boy and it'd say his name. But yeah, that's the that's the, that's the boys, man. I'm burnt out. I I can't. I'm just I'm I'm just tired, man. I'm tired. I can't explain this much, man. I'm I'm just gonna I'm just gonna leave it alone. I'm just gonna. Oh!